Hey guys, welcome to Watch Parties here at CCC. We're so excited that you're taking the time to join us and to pursue Jesus together, go deeper on a point that Brad's going to be talking about that he spoke about on Sunday. But you might be joining us from your bedroom, your house, your uh, coffee shop maybe, but wherever you are joining us, we're so excited to go deeper today together. And today, uh, Brad's going to share something short uh, with us, but something so deep, something so true and so good that we all need to hear. And so I'm very excited. Prepare yourselves to what he has to share, but go right ahead. Thanks, Elijah. Um, but by, by the way, Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh, yeah. it's, right. it's, Merry Christmas, Elijah. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Yeah, I know you love this time of year, just like me. Um, Elijah and I uh, get along great because we like to listen to Christmas music in like October, right? Yes, all the time. We, yeah. Sometimes July. <laughs> so yeah, so as uh, Elijah was saying a second ago, uh, we preach. We actually wrapped up our arrival series, which has been our Christmas series this month. Um, really, uh, like trying to lead us into the Christmas season and really lift that anticipation, excitement about Christmas. Uh, not just the commercial aspect, not just the American aspect of Christmas, but the real Christmas story. And so, uh, you know, I was teaching this past Sunday on the presence. We talked about promise in week one, and then we talked about preparations uh, the week before with Pastor Joel, and then this, this past Sunday, the presence. And I said this statement, I said, Jesus is the evidence of God's desire to be close to you, mm -hmm. right? And you can go back to, I mean, pick any number of scriptures, but uh, you know, probably the one that comes to our mind most quickly is that he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. Mm -hmm. And so talking about God being present, God being born into this world as a human, um, really just, it, it's it's kind of low-hanging fruit. It's pretty easy to talk about around the Christmas season. And, um, and I shared with you uh, just a, a brief uh, time out of John 1, and I connected John 1 to Genesis 28. And um, this is when Jacob falls asleep, has a dream about uh, this ladder, uh, Jacob's ladder, the, the stairway to heaven where angels are coming up and down and God's standing at the top of the stairway speaking to him and telling him about all the, the promises and, and the things that are going to come to pass. And he says these words in verse 15, and what's more, I am with you. Hmm. And uh, it's interesting. I, I tried to draw this out to kind of understand when Jacob wakes up from this dream, he says, wow, I had no idea God was in this place. It's kind of, He's kind of like saying, God, I didn't know you were hanging out here. I've been here all along and didn't know you were here. Uh, there must be something special about this place. But God's kind of saying, no, 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 no. Uh, there's nothing special about this place. You are special. Mm -hmm. I'm hanging out wherever you are. And that's really our New Testament understanding of the presence of God. In the Old Testament, they said, well, God's here. He's on Mount Sinai where God spoke to Moses, or he's in this place where this miracle happened, or you know, all these things. And they would set up you know, these altars and, and say, this is where God met or spoke to so-and-so. Um, but for us in the New Testament, for us in the new covenant, since Jesus came, we understand that we carry the presence of God. And uh, in John 1, uh, Jesus actually speaks back to Genesis 28 in this encounter that Jacob had. He's talking to Nathaniel now, and he says, do you believe in me just because I told you I'd seen you under the fig tree? This is part of the conversation they were having prior to this. He says, you will see greater things than this. He said, I tell you the truth. You will all see heaven open and the angels of God traveling up and down. The son of man, the one who is the stairway or ladder between heaven and earth. And so Jesus represents this kind of bridge where, where God comes to earth and we can be a part of heaven. And, and uh, with him, uh, we are connected to God and, and what's going on there. Um, Jacob had it all wrong is basically kind of what Jesus is saying here. Jacob had it wrong. It's not geography. It's relationship, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not worried about meeting you in a place. I am the way that you can come to the Father. I am the way that you can know God. And uh, Jacob wasn't dreaming about just a ladder or a stairway. He was having a vision of me is, is basically what Jesus is teaching us here. And, um, you know, I, I just want to focus in for a second. Jesus is the bridge between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's the living word that has come to dwell among us. That's what I spoke about in John 1 uh, on Sunday. Uh, he wants an intimate communion with you where you share and he shares the exchange of thoughts and emotions and feelings. And Jesus is the, the presence of God with us forever. That's why uh, I said on Sunday, and I'm saying it again today, that Jesus is the evidence of God's desire to be with us, to be present with us. Yeah, I, lo I love that whole idea of just that... Uh, Jesus, um, that whole bridge and what he did, he made a way for 
to be with us even today in the presence of God. But it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I feel like Brad, when even myself sometimes is like, how would I go about explaining the presence of God uh, to someone? I know sometimes people, uh, sometimes <laughs> myself even, uh, related to like Star Wars, like the Force, not the not the dark side, of course, the Jedi side, <laughs> yeah. but or like that. Uh, he's kind of like a Force, or or he's a feeling of like peace and calm, or like you know this one, like like it's he's kind of like the Dove when it's like the Trinity. You talk about the Trinity, the presence of God and and the Holy Spirit. It's like a Dove, but I, I wonder, uh, uh, Brad, if you can kind of explain, like maybe someone who's watching who maybe is unfamiliar with church culture, mm-hmm. what uh, the presence of God actually is defined as. Yeah, I, I think it's a great question. It's a, a great topic for us tonight. If what we're talking about is that Jesus represents, that God wants to be close to you, and that we can live in the presence of God, what does that mean? What does that feel like? What does that look like? Uh, you know, I, I, we talked a little bit already about how in the Old Testament, and I think the same thing for us today. In the Old Testament, they thought geographically. God is in that place or that place or this place. He's in the place of worship where the tent of Moses is. You know, God is is here. And, you know, when Jacob had that dream, he was in a place he called Bethel. He called it the house house of God. Just a random place where he camped out and and met with God and and thought, well, God's here. God was already here. And then I showed up. Um, And and I think, you know, for us, we kind of do the same thing with church, right? I think, well, God's there at church and I'm going to go there and meet with God um, even though we've been told over and over and over again, no, God doesn't live in a church. He doesn't live in, in the walls of any building. Um, he goes with you wherever you go. I think a, a similar thought, especially this time of year, right, is like God's kind of like Santa Claus. He sees when you, you've you been sleeping. He knows when you're awake. You know, he knows when you've been bad or good, right? Um, but I, I think when you, when you really study scripture and, and really try to understand what does the presence of God mean, I think a good definition for us is that it's an awareness of, and, and, and awareness, before I say the rest of it, awareness really speaks to it's real, it's a reality, whether or not I accept it or uh, understand or whether or not I'm aware of it. It's just a reality. It's just a truth that God is near. God is with us. And, and forever, because of Jesus, that will forever be true, that God is available. God is is so much closer than you think or imagine. And, and I think we, we kind of get it in our minds like, well, I'll draw near to God by studying my Bible more, reading more, thinking of God, and listening to Christian music more, whatever the, the thing is. When God's saying, no, 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 no. I was already there when Jacob had the dream before he knew I was there, and I'm already there near you. And so for, for us, really, it's a greater awareness that no matter how I feel, whether I feel close to God or feel distant from God, it doesn't matter. No matter what I feel, an awareness that I know God is with me and God is near me, God is for me. God loves me. And, and he's close. He's really close at hand, closer than I know, closer than I can imagine. And uh, and it really just takes faith and practice to really get more comfortable with this. And I, I think what I mean by that is there's so much about God that requires faith. Um, scripture says that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God, right? And even in the Old Testament, God said, you can't see me. If you see my face, you'll die. You'll perish. Uh, and and then Jesus says, well, what if I go? And <laughs> what if I go and take on the form of a man? Then they can say they've seen God. Jesus went on to say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? Mm-hmm. And so Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. And he represents that God wants to be near you. He represents the presence of God. And so it takes faith in that. Um, you know, of course, you know, for us today, it just takes faith to live this thing out and just really wake up and say, I believe God that you are with me. And I want to walk in that awareness today. And then what I mean by it takes practice is at first it might feel funny, right? Just like waking up in the morning and saying, God, I know you're with me. Getting in the car to go to work and saying, God, I know you're here in the car with me. Um, And the difficult conversations and the decisions and choices and things that you do throughout any day or week or month, right? That God is near, God is present. And, uh, and that I just need to practice more. I just need to walk that out more. And, and in my practice, that'll become more natural, more familiar, more known to me that God is near. And, and really, that'll impact and affect my life more and more. Yeah, I love that. It's so good. I uh, uh, thought I had was when you talking about like the church and the building, like, oh, God only re- remains there. But the truth of the fact, the fact of the matter is, is that we actually are the church. That's what mm-hmm. the, if you do the study oh, so on the good. church and we are the church. And yeah. so 
Jesus is with you. God is with you wherever you go. You are the church. Yeah. You might be the church, the light that someone else needs in their life. And and I just uh, love that whole idea. Mm-hmm. But we're about to dive into uh, some discussion questions. Um, and it's kind of funny because the discussions questions we have for you today is not our normal like reflection, focus, and then action. They're really a whole lot of focus questions mm-hmm. about you and the presence of God and what it looks mm-hmm. like for you to practice and have uh, and practice faith and practicing being in the presence of God, inviting Him in. And so I want you guys to take this time really to do just that, focus mm-hmm. in on your life and, and uh, the practices you do in your life and what that looks like as you answer these questions. And we'll see you soon, back real soon.
Hey, welcome back. Hopefully you guys had a great time of uh, either discussion with someone that you might be hanging out with watching this video or maybe just with yourself, just kind of internally asking yourself those questions and thinking about the presence of God in your life. And, you know, we want to zero in here as we close out on an invitation. And it really focuses on the uniqueness of how God wants to connect with you, right? I mean, uh, we talked about Jacob and we could have talked about dozens of Old Testament and New Testament stories of how God encountered people and showed up and how they became aware that God was there with them and, and speaking to them, giving promises to them. Um, well, I just want to say uh, God has a unique way of speaking to you, meeting with you, connecting with you, uh, of making you aware of his presence. And, and we just want to give you permission, right? To just mm. ask the Lord, what does that look like? Some of you might be watching this. You might feel really, really comfortable and familiar with this whole idea of being in the presence of God and, and being more aware of that. Uh, maybe for others, you're like, I don't know how to get started in this whole thing. Well, a good place to get started is just ask, just say, Lord, how do you want to meet with me? How do you want to talk to me? How, how can I be in a, a position, a posture of just saying, God, your presence is here. I want to know you more. I want to hear you speak. Uh, I want to worship you. I want to encounter you here in this place, not just on Sunday mornings. Um, to just give you permission to just kind of experiment in that way and just say, God, I want to meet with you in a unique way that's special between you and I and our relationship. And so uh, as you start to practice the presence of God, um, I just want to give you permission to seek that, ask for that, uh, and discover that between you and the Lord. And uh, I, I know personally um, just how impactful that is when you discover those unique and special ways when you go, this is how I really draw near to God, where, where I really become uh, especially aware of his presence and connect with him. Yeah, so good, so good, I love it. Well, hey guys, thank you so much for joining us. I love it so much when we get to pursue Jesus together uh, through watch parties. But I wanna invite you to join us online this Sunday. We're not gonna be meeting in person, but make sure to tune in online um, wherever you are, if you're with your family celebrating. Uh, this for Christmas. Um, but until then, we want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and thank you so much. Merry for Christmas. Us. Yeah. <laughs>